And now let me talk a little bit about the ugly side of the transfer matrix approach. So let's say we want to consider a super lattice structure like this. And uh, let's say we, we take this as a repeating structure. So one repeating unit has an, an like an interface where the electron uh, sees an up interface and th then there's an end down, a down interface, okay? So each of these units is made up of a uh, transfer matrix at each, at each interface, okay? Pretty straightforward. Uh, the, the critical thing is that each of these transfer matrices uh, contain evanescent and propagating states, right? On the left, we have propagating states. On the right of this interface and up, we have evanescent states, right? And for n down, we have evanescent states on the left and propagating states on the right. Now, when I said evanescent, I also meant exponentially growing, right? There's an e to the minus kappa d and an e to the plus kappa d, because both are valid solutions, okay? And they're sitting in that matrix. So let me make that a little bit more explicit. So here's this case of a, uh, a double interface, single barrier transfer matrix, right? So here are the four matrix elements that we had. Oh, sorry, this is just n down. So there is a propagating constant and a decaying constant, uh, exponentially growing. Here's a propagating and exponentially growing. Here is a propagating, exponentially decaying, propagating, exponentially decaying. Okay, now think in terms of computer and numbers, right? That means uh, these would be large numbers, these would be small numbers, okay? If you do the same for the down, you see the same thing, right? So you have I said big, big, small, small on the previous one. Here you have small, small, big, big. Okay? Now you're going to start cascading these things together. What you end up doing is big times small plus big times small, sort of medium, right? That's one matrix element. And then you do big times big, really big. Big times big, really big. You add them, get really big. For the next matrix element, you have, uh, what is it? Small, small, uh, yeah, so small, small, plus small, small. Then you have small, big, plus small, big. So you, you mix small, 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 big, big, big. Just imagine what happens on the next step, right? You cascade the next, right? You multiply with this. That means you cover numerically a huge spectrum of numbers, which means you have exponentially growing numbers and exponentially decaying numbers in it. Computers don't like that. They really don't. They overflow or they underflow. Okay? So you hit the machine precision and the limits of accuracy right away. And you see that especially for real devices where you have band edge profiles, or you see it when you have a multi-band basis where you have more um, decaying state and uh, uh, propagating states because you have multiple bands, right? So transfer matrix is a beautiful thing for teaching quantum mechanics and scattering theory with a pencil and paper. Do not put it on a computer unless you know what you're doing. There's some correcting mechanisms and people got their PhD around how to correct the transfer matrix for a certain application, okay? For single band effective mass with a few layers, like 80, 90 layers, it's okay. But for a real device, it probably is gonna not do so well for you, okay? So that's the really the key summary. The transfer matrix is analytically really pleasing, right? I mean, you can teach it really easily, beautifully, right? But if you want to put it on a computer, it's really numerically not stable, and it doesn't allow you to have realistic heterostructures with real band bending, or if you have a, a large number of basis sets.
right? Effective mass is just like a single s orbital. If you have many orbitals per basis, it's just going to go belly up. <laughs>